David and Goliath. I think uh, most of us either know the story of her or have heard at least of David and Goliath. And maybe you haven't, and that's okay, because we're going to hear about him today. And co continuing in a series of looking at the life of David, with it being Wednesday, and really looking to his example. And we've you know, kind of covered the first couple chapters in 1 Samuel, you know, leading up to you know, what we know about David from his youth and his being anointed king. And then, as we talked about last time, being a a servant to Saul. And now in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we really see David come onto the scene, if you will, in a very public and prominent way, in a leadership way, as the people of God are facing a great enemy and lacking faith. And so let's look at that today in 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you want to turn there with me or listen along. Now, first thing with chapter 17 is kind of a long chapter, um, so I'm not actually going to read this entire chapter. Really, what I would like to do is just kind of skim through and tell the story as it pre progressed, as the events unfolded. Um, so let's look at this together. We find in first thing with chapter 17, at the beginning of this, the Philistines had come up against the people of God, the people of Israel. So Israel goes out there, and what you find is, as the scene is described, the Philistines are on one mountain, and on the other side of the valley, there's another mountain where the Israelites are, and then, of course, there's this valley in between them where they're going to fight and they're going to battle. And on this occasion, the Philistines, though, send a champion known as Goliath, and he is described described there in verses 4 through 7. Uh, Goliath is just a tall, big old guy. Um, he is literally a giant, um, especially in our, or in their day and age, in our day and age. Goliath was a huge, massive, strong warrior of a man, he was a trained warrior from his youth, and he his weapons were huge, his armor huge, everything, of course, to fit his humongous body. And so, certainly, Goliath, I mean, coming up to Israel, um, I would say, yeah, I think any of us would be scared. Any of us would say, I mean, if any of us were going to be in a fight, you know, we want it to be an even fight, if not maybe even have an advantage over the one we're going to be fighting. But that was not the case if you were going up against Goliath. Goliath was double the size of any of them. And that would not have been an easy thing, certainly, to do. So, of course, as Goliath comes out and we find him calling out, challenging the armies of Israel defying Israel, defying God Almighty, which is a big no-no. Um, and so he's coming out challenging them. The plan is that if someone from Israel can defeat Goliath, or that Goliath and a, a champion of Israel, they're going to duke it out, and then whoever wins, then the other side, the losing side, has to submit and be servants to the winning side. Well, the problem was... Saul and all the armies of Israel, they were terrified. Uh, so nobody was willing to go out and challenge. And we actually find later on in verse 16 that this went on for 40 days, morning and evening. 40 days, morning and evening, Goliath came out challenging Israel to fight, to battle this test. Now, that's a long time. For this to go on, for Goliath to be doing his thing. What well, verses 12 to 15 were reintroduced again to David, David the son of Jesse, uh, David being the youngest of his brothers. Actually, we're told, verse 13, that the three oldest sons of uh, Jesse, Jesse actually having eight sons, uh, the three oldest sons were in the army of Israel going against Goliath. David being the youngest, David was helping, you know, serving Saul, but also still serving his father and keeping the sheep. 
Well, the time came when Jesse sends David to the battlefront um, to send, you know, food and such to, um, you know, his brothers um, and the captain and so on and so forth. So David ends up showing up. Um, and we read about when David finally comes, um, he, he greets the, um, and he runs to the army and greets his brothers, uh, begins talking with them. But then as David is talking with his brothers, Goliath comes up, uh, makes his usual speech. David hears all that Goliath is saying. All the men of Israel, when they saw Goliath, they fled away from him in verse 24, dreadfully afraid. And then in verse 25, the men of Israel were saying, you know, have you seen this guy? This guy, Goliath, he is huge. But the king has promised that if the, the man or the man who kills Goliath will be enriched with great riches and will even get to marry the daughter of King Saul and his father's house will be exempt from taxes in Israel. I mean, hey. Great reward there, right? Uh, but no one's brave enough to do it. But here's David, this young, uh, not real big, not real tall, good looking young fella. David begins to inquire about the situation and what was that about a reward and killing this Philistine who has reproached Israel, you know, verse 26, David says, you know, who does this guy think he is in defying the armies of the living God? And so they explain it to him. Verse 28, it's kind of funny. In verse 28, David's oldest brother Eliab, you know, finds David there talking and kind of gets on to him. David says, you know, basically, leave me alone. You know, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm interested. I've got business to take care of. Um... So David starts asking about all of this. Well, the words of David make their way to King Saul. So Saul sends for David. And then David noticed verse 32. David says to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of Goliath. Your servant, David, will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul, of course, you know, says to David, <laughs> you know, no way. I mean, you're... Um, you know, you're just a youth. He was a man of war from his youth. But David then begins to explain, well, I used to keep my father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it. I struck it. I delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard. I struck it. I killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. And moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David's faith. You know, David had experienced in keeping his father's sheep as he explained. You know, lions would come, bears would come, they would snatch away lambs. And if, if it was me, I'd be like, all right, hey, enjoy the lamb chops because I'm not going after that sheep. I'm not going up against a bear or a lion. But David did. And David knew the Lord delivered the lambs to him. The Lord helped him. The Lord protected him. David says, listen, I've gone up against lion. I've gone up against bear. The Lord has delivered those into my hands. I can handle this guy because of the Lord. And this guy cannot come defying God, defying the Lord's army. And so David says, don't worry. God will be with me. And so David says, go with the Lord. They try to give David Saul's armor, but it doesn't fit. So David takes it off. Then verse 40, David takes his staff and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, put them in his shepherd's bag and, uh, in a pouch that he had and a sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And a Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the, man bore the sh and the man who bore the shield went before Goliath. And when the Philistine and Goliath looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come with to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, 
you come to me with a sword. Listen to this. Listen to what David, I mean, David has now gone up out there against this humongous man, a warrior, a battle, a sword, a spear, a, a spear, a shield, all these things. David goes out with a stick and a slingshot and some stones. This is what David says. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air, than the wild beasts of the, the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly will know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. I mean, David doesn't mess around. David says, yeah, you come to me with all these weapons, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God Almighty who is in control of all things, the battle belongs to the Lord, and he will deliver you into my hands. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine, and David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they ran away. And then basically what happens is the army of Israel and Judah, once Goliath is dead, like, oh, hey, let's go. You know, the Philistines are running away. So the army of Israel and Judah, they run after the Philistines, start taking them out one by one. David returns. They, they plunder the tents. David brings the head of Goliath to Jerusalem and the armor and the sword kept with him in his tent. Saul then inquires at the end of this, you know, whose house David belongs to. It does seem, you know, there's some confusion here. And I think in reading this, I mean, Saul knows David, but I think it may be that Saul forgot who David's father was, whose household David was from. Not that he actually forgot who David was, um, but nevertheless, I mean, I could be wrong about that, too. But what we see here in 1 Samuel 17 in the life of David, this young man, is such a wonderful, strong faith that here's this great big giant and all these grown men all these men of israel the king saul an entire army they're terrified but here comes david who has such, such pure solid faith in god that David is willing, he's, he, David says, well, we got to take care of this guy. David goes out with no experience at war, seemingly. David goes out with no armor, no usual weapons. No weapons, really. I mean, a slingshot, sure, but David, probably a third of the size of Goliath, maybe, I don't know. But David confidently, trusting in the Lord, goes out there and defeats Goliath. And that wasn't because, I mean, when we think about it, I mean, David defeated Goliath not because of his own skill. I mean, I'm sure David was pretty good with a slingshot, but, but David didn't kill Goliath or defeat him because David was just so skillful and wonderful. And the Lord gave Goliath into the hands of David. But David's faith was so powerful, so trusting in God. It's a lesson for us today. I mean, we may not be going out into battle, into physical battles and wars, and but we're up against spirit. We're in a spiritual battle up against spiritual giants of life that get in our way. And how are we going to handle those? 
I think we learn a great lesson, an encouraging lesson of faith from David, that when giants get in our way, the spiritual giants, whether it's temptations to sin, whether it's the trials and tribulations and pains and challenges that come with this earthly life, there are going to be giants that get in our way that we need to come and say, the Lord is on my side. I come in the name of the Lord. I can defeat this. I can overcome this because of the power of God. The battle belongs to the Lord and I trust in him. But we've got to put our faith and trust in God to win these spiritual battles, to overcome temptation and sin, to overcome trials and tribulations. We've got to put our faith and trust in God and to know that God will help us defeat these giants. Let's continue to grow in faith and have faith like David who trusted in the Lord and who won the victory that day. God bless.